Um, so zoologists, the topic of the day. The topic of the day. And we are going to comp contrast a hummingbird with nightingale. Yep. Uh, we really just deeply love this house. Mm -hmm. um, out of all of the ones that like we have loved the quickest and easiest that haven't been like methodical slow turns into madness. Uh, like the ones that we just really appreciated right quick were just the, the more feminine fragrances, nightingale and hummingbird. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we've been wearing these extensively, and by we, I mean... Me! So, uh... So first off, let's... Here we go. Let's nightingale. Some nightingale. Okay, here we so go. So Nightingale is extremely weird as a... as a fr fragrance. Um, the juice is a pinky color, peachy pink, so Which that's Which is fun. actually really cool, yeah, yeah. I think that's nice. Okay. Okay, go um, ahead. So when, when I smell Nightingale, the first thing that comes to mind is fizzy. This smells so different on my skin than it does on paper. I think it's just the initial part, too. Maybe, though. yeah. I think right out of the gate. It um, smells, yeah, it smells fizzy. That's what you're saying. Fizzy, yeah, mm -hmm. like, a, like a soda pop that has been made out of uh, plum blossom. Yeah. It was like if bees had a giant party, like if bees had a bachelorette party, this is what it would smell like. Except the oud. Oh. There's oud in there. No wonder I love this. <laughs> oud, oud is definitely a heavy player here. There's three other characters in this, uh, like, huge amalgamation of notes here. Um, like, a ton of notes that really take this just from being a floral and kind of make this a heavy, like, serious niche floral. Like, a niche, serious niche feminine floral. Because uh, a lot of the f feminine florals that you smell smell very light. And very sweet. Very, and very, very sweet. sweet. There's three things here that are really doing it. It's the oud. Uh, it's saffron, which is really giving it a lot of spiciness. Oh, and labdanum. Those three guys, the frankincense you can kind of smell in there, but it smells, it smells just like the faintest bit, like a resin. It's hard to really pick up on the full quality of it. The three, though, saffron, oud and labdanum are the ones that you're that you're really smelling uh, as like very spicy and weighted very heavy notes so um, I've been looking for a spring scent recently and you know I was drawn in by a lot of florals but they would just stay floral and they'd stay really sweet and I didn't really enjoy those nightingale has been one that stuck around because I like that like as it dries down it gets yeah, I guess it'd probably be the oud that I'm smelling as it dries down. That I really enjoy. It doesn't just stay light and fruity and floral. It gets into something a little bit darker, a little bit dirtier. Not, yeah, not dirty, but... But just heavier. Mm -hmm. and like it's... serious, dark niche. Yeah, and so I really, really enjoy that because, I don't know, something that's just going to smell like flowers and candy for me just doesn't work, so... Yeah, and uh, I would say that it's that it's like a spicy... A spicy flower even that's there um, I'm not sure why it smells so fizzy uh, for a while so the other one we're comparing is hummingbird which this doesn't necessarily look as much as it does on Fragrantica but it's kind of like a yellowy greeny color juice yep um, hmm. here you go Hummingbird, hummingbird's my my jam out of the two. Where well, I prefer nightingale out of the two. Yeah, and I think that describes us <laughs> too pretty well. Um, it smells it smells super crazy on here right now. I'm just getting a lot of sweet fruit notes. Yeah, I know. It doesn't say that way though. No, the first the things the things that come to mind most with this, where this smells like a fizzy heavy floral. This to me smells like a light whipped cream mm -hmm. floral. It really yeah. does smell like a hummingbird to me. Like that that one is one of the ones where I was like, God damn, they nailed that shit. See, my beef with this, and it could just be especially when we got this we got this a long time ago and I was a real novice. Um yeah. this one I may have sprayed on too heavily and it gave me a headache for the first couple times I wore it. So in my I just might need to only spray it once. Um on just like once completely in order to get it because it's pungent. Um like all of the zoologist fragrances Oh, are. for sure. Like, it sticks with you for days. You can shower and scrub 
and you'll come out of the shower and you will still smell like zoologist. It's no joke. Like I, th people talk about Montal being really heavy. I don't think Montal has anything on zoologist. Zoologist, I think. There's never been a time where I've sprayed a zoologist fragrance and later I was like, where'd that go? Like, no. Like later you're like, get off of me! Because <laughs> it's just like, it's there forever. It's mm -hmm. super insane. Mm -hmm. Um. So that's kind of been my, my, my one issue, issue with Hummingbird. I'd like to give it a shot again now that it's becoming springtime and now that I, I know a little bit more about perfume and uh, that sort of thing. Where with Nightingale, knowing about what I know about zoologists now, I've been lighter on my sprays. And it stays enough where I can smell it throughout the day, but not so much where I'm like, oh my god, that's all I can see and feel and smell is just this perfume. Yeah, I really like, so out of all the, like I said, out of all the zoologist fragrances, these two were instant smash hits uh, mm -hmm. with us. I thought like for sure both of these full bottle worthy and for like the amount that Victor Wong charges for a full bottle, like, you honestly have to be, like, borderline retarded to not buy a bottle if you actually, like, enjoy the smell. Just because of how, like, long-lasting they are and how quality they smell. There's I mean, not... I think that those are both fair. I mean, yeah. it's... And the bottles are so fucking beautiful. They're classy. I love and the art... them. But, okay, but here's the, here's the other thing about Hummingbird that I think differentiates the two. Nightingale, I think you can smell a lot more of the fruity qualities mm -hmm. in that actually smell like fruity qualities. Here, I think it just smells... Like, like nectar. Like, I think, when I think of Hummingbird, I think, like, they've done an incredible job naming it Hummingbird because it really smells just like a thick, creamy, almost like resin that hummingbirds collect from yeah. the pollen. As far as note break breakdowns go for the two of these, both of them, I think, like, you can smell it and you can't necessarily pin notes down to it. I think um, with Hummingbird, you can, you can kind of say honey is something strong in there. And that's kind of as far to me as I can go. Now, I also don't have a huge breadth of feminine floral notes, um, but... We'll get there. We'll get there. To we'll me, that's there. that's the most I can do, honestly. And out of Nightingale, I really only get three three notes off the top anyway, too, which would, which would to me, just be uh, Plum Blossom, Saffron, um, and then I think uh, you, get, you get the Patchouli just a little, just a little bit. I, you get the oud for sure later on. Hummingbird never becomes anything to me other than the slightest faint trace of honey that I can smell. It just smells like hummingbird, and it's awesome. It's really sweet, but not in the designer yeah, floral. Yeah, like, I, not really to hate on design, way. not to hate on designer florals, but like honestly, to me, like hummingbird smells to me like a lot like if I were to like contextualized purity in a smell like that's kind of what it smells like to me mm -hmm. it smells sweet but not sweet in a, in a like in a like designed to lure you in way but just like a very pure just i mean it smells i can i can never really quite describe it when i smell it i'm just like that smells happy and it smells like a lovely person that and these two are very i mean they're very similar that's part of the reason why we're doing a comp contrast between the two because they're you know, zoologist, feminine, floral, fruity type smells, especially for spring, summery type. Um, however, they're so very distinct. Yeah, I think they deter They call this um, a shipery and they call this one a gourmand. I don't understand either of those labels going on these just because, I mean, the honey here is like, yeah, I can understand that, but it doesn't smell like an edible fragrance. It just smells like a very pleasant thing. Mm -hmm. And I would, I, I mean... As far as, I, I guess I don't know, like, feminine, uh, shipery, I don't know how to say that word, fragrances, because I don't necessarily know them, but, like, it doesn't, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah. So, as we kind of hinted, for me, my 10 out of 10 is Nightingale. I dig Nightingale. It's wonderful. I love the way it dries down. I love it the whole way through. It is going to be one of my next buys, anyway. Yeah, and to me, like, I've changed my mind about a lot of zoologist fragrances. There's a, still only one we haven't smelled at this point. Well, two, I guess. We haven't smelled the old, the old formulation of beaver. Yeah, and panda. And panda. Those are the only two we haven't smelled. I want to smell them both at some point. Um, but out of, out of all of the zoologist fragrances that I've smelled, I would not say that and I might have said this before, I don't think any of them, I, I might have said seven before, but I don't think any of them drop below an eight. Uh, at least 
And I think, like, in terms of quality, they're probably all, like, nines, they're, nines and a half, yeah. tens. And I think that's ridiculous, if not impossible, for a house to achieve. Um, which kind of, like, makes me a tad worried, like... Like thinking, like I don't want to think like when's when's Victor gonna drop the ball, but I don't I don't think he is because I think is it's hard to explain. I don't want to get into it all. <laughs> I think Victor's just a, a sharp guy in the community, and I think he really understands what's going on. And also, there are some really cool interviews that we read. We got into like a weird. We yeah. learned all about Victor Wong kick one night, and we read a bunch of interviews. So he's got some stuff available. It's kind of interesting to hear he's about really his story. Neat. Yeah. Um. But so for me, Nightingale. I would probably call a nine. Mm -hmm. I would say I like it a lot. The only quality I don't so much care for about it is the fizziness, but I've kind of started coming to like it. See, I don't, like, I notice it more on paper, the fizziness. I don't smell the fizziness on me. I know, and see, that's part of, like, that's part of its seduction process. Like, I smell it on you, and that's the first thing I'm like, whoa, that's fizzy. <laughs> and, like, Hummingbird, Hummingbird would be my 10 out of 10. I think, like... I haven't smell. I've I've been I've been smelling a lot more female fragrances for sure, specifically like marketed towards female rather than unisex, and this is still one of the greatest ones I've ever smelled because I think uh, when I we, smell, I it, haven't been able to find. I mean, we haven't been able to find a whole lot of straight femme fragrances that we yeah. enjoy. Most of them, most of the ones that I really want are unisex. Unisex or just masculine. Yep. Um, and I gotta say, like to me, I think. I, I hate to use Aristotelian terms, but I think, like, this is close to capturing, like, an, es an essential quality of womanhood in, like, a fragrance. And it just, like, like, the way that femininity and masculinity are, like, eternal, like, complementarian systems. I think that this is just all about, all about beauty and, like, strength in oneself and, like, caring for other people. It just smells like, I hate to be so poetic and like romantic about it but i think man god damn it hummingbird is awesome what do you what do you, what do you rate hummingbird i mean i give it probably somewhere in like an eight so okay. again i need to give it a shot again right now all i can picture is like oh god the headache <laughs> <laughs> um but again i've come a long way since the last time i wore it so that's true so no i guess I, the moral of the story is if you align more with his views Go with Hummingbird. I mean, a lot more of my views. Go with Nightingale. But if you're in, you know, looking for a solid quality piece of art and perfume and something that's gonna, you know, not necessarily... I don't think either of them are necessarily monsters. I feel that, yeah, they do last a while and yeah, they're fragrant in that, in that if you're not... If you're far away from me, you can smell them, but I don't think it's necessarily... I mean, Not in a bad way, It's though. not in a bad way. Um, but yes, as I was trying to say, Sorry. if you are looking for something that lasts a while, that's good quality, uh, you know, feel free to explore both of these as in regards to fragrances. Zoologists sell samples online. And they sell, like, mini, mini travel, travel like, yeah, bottles. That's, that's what they thought. That yeah. you still get the fucking awesome art on, too. Um, and... When you get, like, a sample, it comes with, like, a really fancy little... Yeah, which and, are just pieces of art in themselves, And, it, you truly. know, it gives you, like, the note breakdown and some other information on there. So I just think, you know, that's what the little samples come in, and that's awesome. So, I mean, just look at how beautiful that is. It's just great. I love it. I've said it before. I think, like, his marketing is the... Some of, if not the very best, like bottling and conceptual story and like consistent art design I out mean, of anybody if you saw our first zoologist review that's what, like we were pretty much just ranting and raving about how wonderful the art of and i've the changed house. my fucking mind on bat too i'm loving that shit now we'll come back to you with the sequel anyways okay so who would you say we got to do it anyway. oh man okay who would you say would wear nightingale or hummingbird or both well not both you can take this time. one i'll take this one Juan. okay okay actually i have a really weird one for this one tell me Poison Ivy. Batman's Poison Ivy. I could see that. Yeah. That's what my picture would wearing this. And I'm thinking like cartoon version, not real life version. I don't have a fictional character, but I have a real person. And we've kind of done that before, so it's kind of cheating, but I'm still going to do it anyway. Let's do it. I'd probably say Hannah Arden because uh, she's Heidegger's girlfriend. Oh. Partial girlfriend. Uh, or like secret lover. But um, mostly because it smells very strong and very, like, independent and very 
just intense. And that's, I mean, if you've read her work, you know, you know what I'm talking about. That's some serious shit. Um, but I would also say that it definitely, like, doesn't try to be anything that it's not and also doesn't try to stop being feminine, but also, like, a masculine feminine, you know what I mean? Like, a more... Hence why I loves it. TBH. Yeah, so that's who I'd say. Okay, you go first for Hummingbird. So for Hummingbird, I would say uh, Jessica Chastain's character in The Tree of Life, uh, a film by Terrence Malick. Uh, she plays Mrs. O'Brien, or as I know her in the movie, Mom. <laughs> um, but she's, like, the movie's supposed to encapsulate her as, like, the figure of, like, care and, and, uh, and love and nurture. Uh, whereas, like, the father character in the film is supposed to be, like, nature and represent kind of, like, harshness and, like, discipline and rigidity. Rigid, rigidity, yeah, I said that right. Um, so, the, just kind of her, because, like, even the way he films it is trying to be, like, poetic and, like, encapsulate that, ele like, element of, of femininity, too, and, and motherhood. And I think that's kind of what, I like, it hits me with. How about you? There's something in particular but i can't think of who it is but nonetheless it's a fairy wearing a pink dress that's also a tutu but coming soon to a theater near you bat the sequel